Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Man, oh man, those kids are in a hurry. And no wonder. They know Mom's serving a breakfast of swell-tasting Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. These ready-to-serve grains of premium wheat or rice are actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. Yes, wheat or rice shot from guns really hits the spot. Don't miss out tomorrow morning. Enjoy this breakfast treat. Quaker puffed rice. Or Quaker puffed wheat. A rush to the Yukon was just getting underway when Lee Swanson finished college as a geologist. Lee and his young wife, Sadie, saw a golden opportunity in the Yukon. But after two weeks in the boom town of Dawson, they began to doubt the wisdom in coming to the Yukon, though neither admitted it to the other until one day Lee returned to their room with a bundle of laundry under his arm. Oh, hello, Lee. What's that you have there? The laundry. I just stopped at the Chinaman's for it. Oh, I forgot to get it. This little bundle of laundry cost me exactly $30. $30? That's it. And you can't blame the Chinaman. He has to pay high prices for everything, too. In fact, he apologized for having to charge me so much. Well, I should think he would apologize. But, honey, I couldn't pay it. I only had $20 on me. He let me owe him the rest until I get a job. Then you... Didn't get a job, Lee? Oh, it's the same old story. I've heard it every day since I got here. No one's hiring geologists with no experience. Oh, Lee, you could find gold for them if they'd give you just one chance. I know I could, I know, but they don't think so. So, Sadie, the best thing you and I can do is head back to the States. I'll not do it. I'll not go back. You could never get a job as a geologist if you went back and admitted you failed here. Well, that's true, honey, but what am I going to do about it? You're going to find gold yourself. That's what you're going to do. You're going to show up those stupid speculators. Oh, now, no, Sadie, let's look at the facts and be honest about it. Right now, in your pocketbook, not mine, we have a total of $105. Lee, I got an idea. A good idea. Huh? Let's hear it. I saw a little shack down the street today. Had a for sign on it. We're going to rent that shack, Lee, and I'm going into business. Yeah, into business? What kind of business? The laundry business. At a dollar a sock and five dollars a shirt, it looks like a mighty good business to get into. <laughs> oh, as tragic as this situation is, Sadie, I've got to laugh. I'm not fooling, Lee. I mean it. I'm buying two wash tubs and a scrubbing board in the morning. No, no, just a minute, Sadie. No wife of mine is going to earn a living for me. Now, get that straight. And you get this straight. I have no intention of earning your living for you, but I am going to help you get started. And a wife who won't do that isn't worth her salt. What do you mean, help me? Am I going to wait on the customers and pretend to be the boss while you scrub their dirty linen? No, of course not. Lee, with the money I make, you can go into the back country and look for gold. What? You mean you'll grubstake me? Yes, that's what I mean. And I know you'll find gold. You'll make some of these mining speculators wish they'd hired you. Sadie, I hate the thought of you working over a wash tub, but I promise I won't let you down. I'll find gold. Wash tub's full. <laughs> <laughs> Sadie Swanson carried out her plans. The next day, she rented the shack, bought two wash tubs and a washboard, and went into business. Her husband, Lee, helped her to get set up. 
And at the end of the week, there was enough money to buy equipment for Lee to start out on his prospecting trip. It was four months later when Sergeant Preston, who had become one of Sadie's regular customers, dropped in with his famed lead dog, King, and a bundle of clothes to be washed. I have an iron ready for you tomorrow evening, Sergeant. No rush about it, Sadie. King and I are going to make a patrol to the Thunder Creek country, and we'll be gone about a week. Oh, well, it'll be ready when you return, Sergeant. And if you're going up Thunder Creek way, you can do me a favor. Well, I'd be glad to. I had a letter from Lee yesterday. He's up there. That's so? How's he making out, Sadie? Well... Frankly, Lee's had a lot of bad luck. Uh-huh. He hasn't struck anything so far, but he says the prospects are good. Someone will find that mother load up that way one of these days, and Lee knows that. <laughs> I think you and Lee are conspirators. How do you mean? Keeping my spirits up. Oh, I surely thought Lee would have found gold by now. I... I'm beginning to lose hope. Don't get disheartened, Sadie. Lee knows what he's about. I've watched him at Cedar Creek and Bullfrog. Didn't waste much time in either place, and the diggings gave out in no time. Oh, I guess I should be ashamed for saying what I did. Don't tell him, will you? Of course not. Now, uh, what's the favor you want me to do for you, Sadie? Oh, here's some money I've saved up. Lee needs it. Will you take it to him? Be glad to. Oh, thank you, Sergeant. Well, King, old boy, let's go. <laughs> Three days later, the Sergeant and King arrived in the small settlement of Thunder Creek. And contrary to Preston's expectations... He found Lee Swanson in a jovial mood. When he handed over the money Sadie had sent, the young geologist (laughs) chuckled. (laughs) I'll bet that's every cent she had in the place. I suspected as much when she handed it to me. Sadie must be very blue, or she'd have sent a letter along with this money. Isn't that right, Sergeant? Well, I couldn't answer that, Lee. (laughs) Don't lie to me, Sergeant. I know Sadie. When I don't get a letter, she's worried. Worried about me. She told you she was worried, too, didn't she? Well, yes, she did. There's no sense in me denying it. She said your luck had been bad recently. (laughs) Good old Sadie. Sergeant, I've got the biggest surprise of her life. But until yesterday, I didn't dare build up her hopes. I had to keep it a secret. Well, let's hear it. I'm interested. Well, when I hit Thunder Creek, the Yukon Development Company thought they had a lead on the mother load. Yes? They were preparing to go to work about a mile east of here. I looked over the terrain, knew they were wrong. I staked a claim a mile north and... Brought out a few samples and showed it to company officials. And they bought you out? <laughs> for a hundred thousand dollars in cash. Well. What a surprise for Sadie that's going to be. Congratulations, Lee. I knew you'd do it one of these days. Oh, uh, you didn't sell out right, of course. Yes, I did, Sergeant. It was a gamble for both of us. The company said whole hog or nothing, and I needed the money. You see, I've got my eye on another vein about 20 miles from here. You uh-huh. have? Uh, that's a secret, of course, until I've explored its possibilities. If it's as good as I think it is, I'll form my own company and develop it myself. That's why I accepted the 100000 On that basis, you acted wisely. Uh, now I, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. All right, leave if I can. I'm going up there and stake that claim. And I don't want to get into any legal battles that lead up my operating capital. I want to witness that I staked the claim, that I took out samples. You want me to go with you? That's right. We can be back here by tomorrow noon... And I'll pack up my fortune and go back to Dawson with you and King. We can break the good news to Sadie together. How about it? I'll be glad to go with you. In fact, I'll register your claim right on the spot. We'd uh, better get started. (laughs) King heard you say go, and he's all for it. I I sure hate to disappoint him. Disappoint him? How do you mean? Well, I've got the hundred thousand in paper money, gold certificates. I don't want to take it with me. I might lose it or be robbed. I want to leave it here in the cabin and... I'd like King to stay on guard, if it's all right with you. It's all right with me. We can leave plenty of food and water, and I'll padlock the doors. The windows are locked from the inside. All right. Now, King, I'm going to ask you to hear, fella. Don't let anyone come into this cabin while we're gone. You better draw a bucket of water, Sergeant. Put it near the fireplace so it doesn't freeze. All right. We'll leave food for him in the kitchen. Now, King, come here, boy. I want to show you something. See this book on the shelf here? Don't let anyone touch it. Understand? (laughs) I've got my money hidden in it. And if anything happens to that money, Sadie will have to go on washing clothes. (laughs) I actually believe you do understand, old boy. A short time later, Duke Dunbar, a confidence man, entered a room in the Thunder Creek Tavern to find his natalie dressed partner, Nifty Smith, grooming himself in front of a cracked mirror over the washstand. Nifty, 
Here's where we make a cleanup. But we've got to act fast. Let's hear it, too. You talk while I put on a clean shirt. I had breakfast with a clerk from the Yukon Development Company. He says the company bought a rich claim from that young geologist yesterday. That fella Swanson? Yeah, paid him $100,000 in gold certificates. Swanson's no sucker. We'd never be able to sell a salted mine to him. I'm not aiming to try. Less than ten minutes ago, I saw Swanson and that Mountie, Sergeant Reston, head east out of town. They were carrying blanket rolls and grub packs. Mountie, what's he doing in town? He's here on patrol, that's all. Now, will you shut up and listen? Okay, go on. I saw the Mountie when he and his dog hit town about an hour ago. But the dog didn't leave with Preston and Swanson. What's that got to do with this cleanup we were going to make? It means that Swanson left that money in his shack. Huh? Sure, the dog's guarding it. You can bet on it. Well, it'll be like taking candy from a kid. It'll be that easy. Ah, just a minute, Duke. I've heard plenty about that dog, and he's bad when he wants to be. He'd tear us apart if we tried to get into that cabin, and we don't dare shoot him. A shot would start a riot in this village. Yeah, I know. I thought of all that. Here. See this? What do you got in that bottle? <laughs> you remember that animal trainer with a circus? Who offered $500 to anyone who'd climb in the cage with the tigers? You know, the one down in Georgia. Oh, yeah. Now I'm beginning to get you. <laughs> A country chump stepped in the cage and the big cats ran from him. Oh, sure, I remember. He doused his clothes with chloroform. Yeah. His cats wouldn't get in from him. Well, this is chloroform. Where'd you get it? The mining company's in furry. Made out like I had an aching tooth. Here, I'll take this dirty shirt you just took. Hey, lay off that shirt. It's my lucky shirt I wear when I play cards. I won't hurt it. I'll get your skeleton keys and let's get going. I got them in my pocket. But what are you going to do with my shirt? (laughs) I'll show you, Nifty. Now, come on. We'll continue our story in just a moment. thinking of something. Can you tell me what it is? Gee, that sounds like a swell game. Can all of us play it? That's the idea, kids. You simply ask me questions. I'll answer right or wrong, and you see how quick you can guess just what it is I'm thinking of. Ready? Okay. Let's see. Is it something famous? Right, Billy. We all know about it. Gosh, could you give us a hint? Just a little one. Well, I really shouldn't, but... uh... Well, it's good. You mean good to eat? Uh Uh-huh, real good. And good for you, too. Can you buy it in grocery stores? Sure can. And would it taste good for breakfast? It sure would. Oh, boy, I'll bet I know what it is you're thinking of. Me, too. Is it shot from guns? Correct. That's what makes it so crisp and tender. We got it. It's Quaker puffed wheat. And Quaker puffed rice. Kids, you hit the nail right on the head. I was thinking of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. The swell-tasting, ready-to-serve breakfast cereals shot from guns. And fellas and girls, take a tip from me. Here's a breakfast worth thinking about. It's a bowl full of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice, swimming in milk or cream, and topped with your favorite fruit. Like, say, sliced bananas. Man, oh man, you'll say there's no beating this eaten. From first to last delicious spoonful, wheat or rice shot from guns hits the spot. Remember... Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, both swell kinds, are actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. They're shot through and through with keen nut-like flavor, too. Wheat or rice shot from guns is never sold in bags or bulk. Ask Mom to get the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. He's your guarantee that you're getting the one and only Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Now to continue our story. Lee Swanson's shack was located at the edge of town, and the street was practically deserted when Duke and Nifty reached it. They heard nothing until Nifty brought from his pocket the set of skeleton keys with which they planned to open the padlock on the door. Yeah, I hear him. Yeah, I knew he was in there. I hear him. I sure hope that chloroform trick works as good on him as it did on those tigers. Oh, well, I'll get that lock open. It took but a few moments to find the key that fitted the padlock. But Nifty hesitated to open the door. Duke was pouring the pungent liquid on the lucky shirt. You ready? Yeah, just a minute. I'll I'll hold the shirt on the end of this stick. I'll just open that door a little. 
Let him get a sniff of this stuff. Get set. <coughs> Hope he don't chew your arm off. Here, boy. Here, boy. Come on. Take a sniff here. <laughs> what did I tell you, Nifty? Hear him back up? Now open the door wide and let's get in there before someone sees us. Here first, Duke. I'll keep you covered with my gun just in case that stuff doesn't work. Like the ferocious tigers of the circus, King feared no man or beast. Many times in his life, the great dog had faced death in fights with men and beasts, with never a thought for his own safety. Here, boy, here, here. But instinct told him that this strange odor was something he could not fight, something that numbed the senses, something that killed strangely but surely. That's it. The law of self-preservation is the strongest of all instincts in men and beasts. King fearfully obeyed it. That's it, doggy. Just keep back in toward that kitchen door. He doesn't <laughs> want any of it. He's backing up just like those tigers did. There, he's back into the kitchen. Kick the door shut. Right. Yeah, that did it. He's locked in there for keeps. <laughs> I don't blame him for running. That stuff's awful. Phew, I hope it doesn't knock us out. No, it won't. We'll leave the door open and air the place out. Then let's start going through this cabin with a fine-tooth comb. Right. The following day, when Sergeant Preston and Lee Swanson returned, they were mystified to find King in the kitchen with the intervening door closed. Well, that's strange. I wonder how he got that door shut. It is strange. Just a minute, King. I'll let you out. Well, how'd you get yourself locked in there? Sure is excited about it. I can't understand it, Lee. Where'd you put his food? In the kitchen. He must have gone in there to eat it, and a gust of wind down the chimney may have blown the door closed. That's possible. Yes, it is. <laughs> King, you must have been very thirsty locked in the kitchen. Lee, there's something wrong about this, and he's trying to tell us. But no one's been in the cabin, Sergeant. The front door was padlocked just as I left it. Nothing's been disturbed inside. Where'd you leave that money? <laughs> You'll laugh when I show you. I had an old copy of the World Almanac. I cut out the center of the inside pages, leaving the covers intact. Then I, I put the money inside. No one had suspected it contained. It's right there on the shelf with my geology books. I don't see it. What? Hey, it's not here. It's gone. What's the matter, King? He saw me put the almanac on the shelf just before we left. Now he's pouring in the ashes. Just a minute there, fella. This part of it, Lee? Let's see. Yes. Yes, that's it. It's been burned. And my money was in it, my fortune. King, I wish you could tell us how that almanac got there. I'll tell you how it got there. He's trying to tell us that he did it. That's what he is. Just a minute, Lee. King wouldn't destroy anything. Don't accuse him of it. I will accuse him. He saw me put the almanac on the shelf. He got it off the shelf and played with it, then tossed it into the fire. I don't believe it. Of course you don't. You don't want to believe it. To you, that dog can do no wrong. But I say he's no different than any other dog. Oh, my money, it's gone, and it's King's fault. Instead of losing his temper, Sergeant Preston put his arm around the young geologist and forced him into the chair, reasoning with him as he did. You haven't lost your fortune, Lee. You say the money was in gold certificates? Yes. The mining company will have a record of it. And if it doesn't, the banks in Dawson will. You and I can testify as to what happened. Now, it'll take time, for a couple of months, but your money will be replaced. Yeah, red tape, I know what that is. And the case is going to be hard to prove. All we can do now is go back to Dawson and present a claim for it. Yes, that's all. Oh, how I hate to break this bad news to Sadie. Three days later, Lee Swanson was tending counter in his wife's little laundry as she ironed nearby. The door opened, and a uniformed bellboy from the Klondike Hotel entered carrying a small bundle under his arm. Could you do a rush job of washing and ironing this shirt? How about it, Sadie? Well, I'm very busy right now. Would tomorrow morning be quick enough? Well, no, I'm afraid not, Miss Swanson. Belongs to one of the customers at the hotel. Said he wanted to get into a card game tonight. And... <laughs> well, he says this is his lucky shirt. Never plays cards without it. Oh, pardon me while I open the door. That dog wants in. Oh, I'll open it, Mr. Swanson. All right. Oh, he's come for Sergeant Preston's laundry. The sergeant left it a week ago. This is the smartest dog in town. I'll disagree with you on that. Now, Lee, don't say that. Hey, hey, look out. King, put that dog. Leave it alone. Stop him. Give me that shirt. Well, can you beat that? Oh, come over, King. He grabbed that shirt right off the counter and ran with I it. I told you that dog couldn't be trusted. Now maybe you and Preston will believe me. He's got me in a jam. 
If I don't dare go back without that shirt, that gambler will kill me. And you'd better go get it. It's oh, just what I'm going to do. And I'm going with you. Preston's going to keep that dog out of here from now on. Here, fella. Where'd you get that shirt? That's not mine. I sent you for my laundry, and you bring back this thing. <laughs> I'd hate for my friends to see me wearing a shirt as loud as this one. And if the commissioner saw me, we'd both be out of a job. <laughs> Come in. <laughs> Hello, Lee. Well, Preston, what's so funny about this? Either Sadie or King made a mistake. This isn't my shirt. Oh, you bet it's not yours. <laughs> that dog got me into plenty of trouble. Just look, this shirt's ruined. It's not only dirty, it's ripped. Oh, I'm going to catch it. That gambler will kill me. And I hope he kills this dog. Lee, I don't want to hear any more of that. I presume King has made a mistake. But I'll pay for this circus poster you call a shirt. Now, what's this all about? The bellboy from the Klondike Hotel explained what happened as Lee Swanson and Sergeant Preston listened in silence. What do I tell a gambler, Sergeant? Just what you've told me, and I'm going along with you to pay him for the shirt. Come on, King. Picking up the soiled shirt, Sergeant Preston moved through the door with King and the bellboy at his heels. A few minutes later, they entered the hotel hallway that led to the room occupied by Nifty Smith and Duke Dunbar. The bellboy was still fearful. I sure hate to walk in there and face that fellow. He'll complain to the management about me. Very well. Let me go in first and explain. Will you do that? Yes, son. You and King stay outside in Wyconia. It sure is swell of you, Sergeant. King, stay with the bellboy. The gambler's are number 27 at the end of the hall. There's two of them occupying the room. Don't go away. I won't. I'll be right here. What do you want, Marty? May I step inside? Four. Well, something happened to the shirt you sent to be laundered. I want to explain it. My shirt? Yes, here it is. Okay, come in. What's the matter? This is my partner. Hi there, Marty. Hello. Now, what about this shirt? You sent it to the laundry, I understand. And Sergeant Preston the... briefly sketched the story as it had been told to him by Lee Swanson and the bellboy and was somewhat relieved when the two men, both of whom had greeted him coldly, now burst into laughter. <laughs> I'm glad you're not as angry as the bellboy thought you'd be. However, I insist on paying for the damage. Paying for it? <laughs> Why, Sarge, I wouldn't think of taking money from you. I haven't had a laugh like this in a year. It's worth the price of the shirt. Ah, you just go right along, Sarge, and forget all about it. Nifty was joshing the bellboy about it being his lucky shirt. Wasn't you, Nifty? Sure I was. <laughs> That's an old shirt, not worth a cent. <laughs> will you explain to the bellboy you're not going to have him fired? He's really worried. Sure, we'll tell him when we see him. Don't you worry about it. He's right outside well, here. Why didn't he come in with you? I left him with my dog, King. He was afraid to come in. King, wait. Don't call the boy. Why not? You said you'd explain to him. But it, it's not necessary. You tell him. We don't want to be bothered with him. Just tell him to forget it. He'd rather hear it from you. No, I don't. Shut up, Nifty. All right, come on in. Yes, Sergeant. These gentlemen have something to tell. Get away! Get them off! King, King, come boy! I'm getting out of here! I'm running! Run, Nifty! Just a minute! Hold on there! Let go of me! I'm getting out of here! That dog's a killer! He sure is, Sergeant. He jumped that man for no reason. Let go of me! I'll sue you for this! If you're in such a hurry to get away from Let... King, why do you have to take that suitcase? Let go of me! I'll sue you! Let go of me! Oh, God! I'll use it! Take him, King! Oh no! Hold him, King! I was expecting that. I'll get your hands up, both of you. Did he shoot you, Sergeant? No, thanks to King. Come over here, son. Yes, sir. Open that suitcase. Yes, sir. You'll regret this. I recognized both of you when I walked in here. Nifty Smith and Duke Dunbar, confidence men. Then why didn't you arrest us when you came in? I wanted to know why King was interested in stealing your shirt from a laundry. And I think I'll find the answer in that suitcase. You won't find anything to hang on us. Hey... Hey, look here, Sergeant. Money, plenty of it. Leave that money alone. We made that honest. Gold certificates. Let's see the numbers on those. Here you are. Just as I thought. I know where these came from. What's the matter with King, Sergeant? Snarling at the suitcase. You notice a peculiar coming from the suitcase? Yes. Yes, I do. What is it? Chloroform. Coming from this little bottle. But why would Right it... now, I haven't time to explain. King and I have a job to do. Duke Dunbar, Nifty Smith, 
I arrest you in the name of the Queen. For what? Grand larceny. Come on, you're going to jail. Yeah, oh, you, you can't, can't make do this. that. Despite their protests, Duke and Nifty were taken to the jail. It was a little later when Sadie looked out the window and saw the Mountie and his dog approaching. Oh, here comes Sergeant Preston and King. He'd better not bring that dog in here. I warned him, Sadie. Oh, now, Lee, don't talk like that. King never did anything like that before. He must have a reason. He's just an ornery, destructive pooch. That's all there is to it. Now, not let him in here. Get that dog out of here. I warned you once. Please, Lee. Come on, King. Come on in, boy. Sergeant, I told you to get that dog out of here, and I mean it. Lee, before we leave, I think you'll apologize to King for all you've said about him. Take a look at these. Money. Gold certificates. What? Ever see them before, Lee? Oh, yes. They're mine. Where did you get them? From the men who robbed your cabin on Thunder Creek. What? Thanks to King and the shirt you accused him of stealing. Oh, Sergeant. When Sergeant Preston had explained all the circumstances leading to the arrest and confessions of Duke Dunbar and Nifty Smith, Lee Swanson reached down and took the great dog's paw in his hand. King, if you were a man, I'd tell you you'd sock me in the jaw. I've got it coming. But the best thing I can do is to shake your paw and ask, let's be friends again. <laughs> Well, it was you, not King, who wanted to break friendship, Lee. That's right, Sadie. King's proved he was Lee's friend all the time. <laughs> yes, King, old fellow. The case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. Fellas and girls, remember, delicious Quaker Pup wheat and Quaker Pup rice now offer you, at no extra cost, a complete miniature model farm. Yes, 46 detail scale models are now on eight different packages of the breakfast cereals shot from guns. You get exciting models like Big Red Barn with Sliding Door, the farmhouse itself, windmill that turns, and listen. That's Biff the Bull, just one of many models of animals to stock your farm. And remember, at no extra cost, you get as many as six models to a single package. Don't delay. Ask for Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice today. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in case of the Trail of the Werewolf. According to legend, a werewolf is a man who has taken the form of a wolf. What the Trail King and I followed was that of a wolf in the form of a man. A killer who was both cruel and cunning. And we faced our greatest danger when we reached the end of the trail and the werewolf was at bay. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. Boys and girls, if your dog could talk, I bet he'd ask for kennel ration. You know why? Because kennel ration is one dog food that is made with lean red meat. Choice cuts of U.S. government-inspected horse meat. Have Mom open a can. Notice the appetizing aroma. You can actually see the chunks of meat. And Mom will be glad to know that kennel ration helps develop a thick, glossy coat that dirt won't cling to. Ask for kennel ration. First in canned dog food. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pup Wheat and Quaker Pup Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.